Hey guys, I know that all of you have varying levels of skills when it comes to Adobe After Effects. Some of you may even go, what the hell is an After Effects? Anywho, most of my current tutorials are aimed at intermediate to advanced users of After Effects, but lately I've been getting a lot of requests to make a tutorial for absolute beginners. For those of you who may not even have started up the program before. Oh, I'm looking at you, Walter. This tutorial is a very basic introduction to Adobe After Effects and what it's used and not used for. I will give you an overview of the basic workflow and the interface by taking you through creating a simple visual effect from start to finish. Visual effects are typically created by placing a number of visual elements on top of each other and compositing them together into a final, hopefully realistic or at least cool looking result. In our modern day and age we have a number of software tools that help us with this process and Adobe After Effects is one of the major tools currently used in the professional industry. These programs are commonly referred to as video composition programs and there are a number of different options available so if After Effects isn't your slice of beef or maybe you do find it a little bit too pricey there are a large number of alternatives out there with similar capabilities. The basic workflow for Adobe After Effects is 1. You import your footage as well as any graphics, photos or stock footage elements that you need to create your effect. Step 2. You create a composition inside of Adobe After Effects. Into that composition you then add all of your visual elements in layers. You can then align them, rescale them, mask them and add all sorts of effects to them to blend them together nicely. Step 3. You export your composition into a final output file. That output file will usually be a video but it can be a still image as well. Note that After Effects is not really meant to be used for extensive editing and does not playback sound by default. After Effects really specializes in adding visual effects to selected shots and then exporting them or linking them back to your main editing software like Adobe Premiere. Now let's jump into Adobe After Effects and apply this basic workflow to create a simple visual effect. The interface of After Effects is split up into several panels. Note that yours might look slightly different if you're using a different version than me. I'm using CS6. But the interface works pretty much the same way in all versions of After Effects. At the very top of the window you will find your standard menu bar with your basic file operations, commands to control the compositions and layers and other elements in your project as well as menus for customizing the interface or browsing the help resources. Just below that you will see the toolbar. The toolbar contains all the core tools available to you to work with the elements in your compositions like selecting, moving, rotating, camera controls, pen and text tools and much much more. The big panel on the left contains the project tab. This is where all your imported media will appear. In this tab you can create folders to organize all the visual elements you've imported into your project or any compositions that you've created. At the bottom of the screen you will see your timeline. On the left side of the timeline you can see all of the layers in your current composition and change their settings. On the right side you will see a horizontal bar for each of the layers. This represents the lifetime of the layer and visually shows you when the layer will start and end. The vertical red line is the timeline indicator. You can drag this indicator around in your timeline and the big preview window in the center of the screen will continuously update to show you exactly what your composition at the selected time looks like. On the right side of the interface you will see a number of tool panels and these can be configured. By default you will see cursor information as well as audio levels. You also will see the preview panel which contains all the playback controls. If you want to playback your composition with sound you will have to use the RAM preview option in your preview panel. A very important tab is the effects and presets tab because it contains all of the effects available to you inside of Adobe After Effects. There's also a tab for controlling any text you place in your composition. At the bottom I also have tabs for alignment, camera tracking and paragraph controls. If you accidentally close one of these tool panels, for example the camera tracker, you can very easily get these back. Simply go to your menu bar, click on window and re-enable the tool panel. Let's close this project and create a very simple explosion effect. To create a new project simply go to file, new, new project. This is what After Effects will usually look like if you open it up without selecting a recent project. There are a number of ways you can import your footage into After Effects. You can go to the menu bar and click on File, Import, File. A small file browser will pop up where you can select the files that you want to import. Alternatively, and this is my personal favorite, you can simply double click into some empty space in your project tab. The same import file browser will pop up. I'm going to select a short clip where I, pretty badly, pretend to be blown away by an explosion. 
The last option is to simply drag and drop files from your file browser directly into your project tab. I've got some cool stock footage of an explosion from Detonation Films that I'm going to drag into my project tab. You can download this clip for free online and I've included a link in the description of this video. Now, I'm a total neat freak, so I'm going to create a folder for any stock footage elements I add, even though at this point it's just the one explosion. Now that we have all our media imported into Artifacts, it's time to create the composition. You can create a composition by going to the menu bar and clicking on Composition, New Composition. Alternatively, and I always prefer the shortcuts, there's a little button at the bottom of your project tab, which will create a new composition. Both of those options will pop up a small dialog box where you can configure your new composition. In here, you can give your composition a useful name, you can adjust the resolution and the frame rate as well as the duration. I'm going to leave it at 1080p and I'm going to make it about 30 seconds long. Just click OK and a new composition will be created for you. Note that you can also see this composition inside your project tab next to your imported media. In the timeline, you will have a new tab with the name of your composition. This tells you that you currently have that composition opened. If you accidentally close this tab, you can open it again by going into your project tab and double clicking on your composition to open it. Now for the fun part, let's add some visual elements into our composition. Simply select a piece of media in your project tab and drag it into the layer window of the composition. Congratulations, you've just created a brand new layer in your composition and the preview window in the center of the screen should show you the visual element that you've added. As long as the timeline indicator, remember the vertical red line, is on the bar for the layer. You can press space to play back your composition. Press space again to stop playback. Now let's add the explosion. Drag the explosion stock footage into your layer window and play back your composition. If you can't see your explosion, it probably is because you've added it below the footage layer. The order of your layers is very important. In order to see the explosion, we need to place it on top of the footage layer, not beneath it. You can rearrange your layers simply by dragging them around in the layer window. You can disable the visibility on any layer that you want simply by clicking on the eye icon next to the layer name. You can also drag the layer around in the timeline on the right. This will change where your clip will start and end. Additionally, you can drag the sides of that bar to shorten your clip either from the beginning or from the end. Because our clip starts with a big logo of Detonation Films, I'm going to trim down the beginning of the clip just to cut out that logo. This way we just see the explosion. Let's move the explosion layer so the explosion starts exactly when I throw myself away to the left side. Note that in the preview window you can actually click on the layer and drag it around. You can also drag one of the corners and scale it up. If you want to scale the layer uniformly, you can hold down the shift key on your keyboard. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and place the explosion exactly on the box. Yeah, the timing looks about right, but you may have noticed there's a huge ugly black box around our explosion. Let's fix that. There are different blend modes available that you can assign to your layers. Each blend mode merges your layer differently with the layer directly below. In the layer window, you have a mode column. If, for whatever reason, you cannot see this column, you may have to click on your toggle switches and modes button at the bottom of the screen. Now let's change our blend mode for the explosion layer from normal to add. Now that looks a lot more like an explosion. And yes, my acting is horrible, but that's kind of besides the point. Now technically we could export this clip and be quite happy with our first explosion effect. However, I quickly want to show you how you can assign effects to your layers because this is one of the most fun parts of After Effects. Rather than using an additive blend mode, we're going to use a color key to remove the black of the explosion. I'm going to set the blend mode of the explosion back to normal. And well, as expected, the black around the explosion is back. Go to your effects and presets tab on the right side of the screen. In the search bar, search for color key. This will filter down all of the effects available to only the ones matching your text. Out of the two options, we're going to use the color key effect. To assign an effect to a layer, simply click it in the effects and presets panels and drag it onto your layer. Note that in the same window where your project tab sits, an effect controls tab has been opened. You can toggle between this one and your project tab at will. The effect control tab shows you all of the effects assigned to your currently selected layer. If you select a different layer, you will see the contents of that tab change on the fly. With the explosion layer selected, you should see the color key effect inside the effects control panel. Now we need to tweak this effect. Select the color picker for the key color parameter and click on the black of the explosion. 
To remove all of the black, we're going to also increase the color tolerance. Simply click on the value for the color tolerance and drag it towards the right to increase it until all of the black from the explosion has been removed. Now, I much preferred the additive blend mode because it looked a lot cooler and, well, it was a lot less effort. However, I quickly wanted to demonstrate how you can use effects on your layers. And I do encourage you to try all of the different effects that are available in After Effects and just play around with them and see what they do. You can disable any effect that you've assigned to a layer by clicking onto the little FX icon next to the name. I'm going to disable the color key effect and I'm also going to change the blend mode back to additive. Now let's finally export this video. Playing back our composition, there's a whole lot of black after the explosion is finished just because both layers have ended and there's nothing else to render. We can control which part of the composition we're going to export by trimming down the time ruler just above the layers. If you want to make this change permanent, you can also right click onto the time ruler and select trim comp to work area. Note that this changed the duration of our composition to only encompass the time we specified in the time ruler. In order to render your composition, make sure that you have the current composition opened and then go to your menu bar and click on composition, add to render cube. Next to the composition tab in the timeline area, we now see the render cube with our composition already added. This is where you configure all the options for how you want to export your composition. In the render settings dialog, you can control things like the quality of the render as well as the resolution. In the output module is where you specify the actual video format and all of the video settings. I'm going to go with a QuickTime format and for the channels I don't need to export an alpha channel so I'm just going to select RGB. Also make sure that you set your format options correctly as this is where you specify the quality of the output video. You can also determine to resize or crop the final output video in this dialog box and note that audio is not enabled by default. You can enable audio but After Effects is not really all that great to work with audio to begin with. The last and probably most important thing in your render queue that you can set is the output file name. I'm just going to make a small export folder and I'm fine with the my first VFX file name. Now it's finally time to click on the render button in the render queue to export your video. A progress bar will appear and the preview window will update as the composition is being exported. Now that the video is rendered, let's go to our export folder and have a look at the final video. It might not be the greatest visual effect of all times, but you've just created your first visual effect from start to finish with Adobe After Effects. So where do you go from here? Well, to get you started, I've created a number of introductory tutorials that cover the basic operations of After Effects and I highly recommend that you do check these out. There are six in the series, three are available right now and the other ones I will upload as soon as I'm done with them. So just click one of these links if you want to learn all about masking, adjustment layers, maths, compositions and pre-composing, parenting and null objects. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Please subscribe if you want to see more or come and stalk me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.